Okay, hello folks. I'm on a, a job right now where I had some uh, challenging soil and gravel. Well, actually not much gravel at all. That's why it's challenging uh, on this uh, sub-slab depressurization system. By the way, my name is Scott. I'm a radon mitigator in Virginia. I make videos for other radon mitigators and those looking to get into the business. If you're a homeowner, you can stay and hang out. Check out www.nrsb.org. That's National Radon Safety Board. Plug in your zip code and that'll put you in touch with a certified radon professional in your area. So here's the actual material that I was pulling out of the hole. I don't usually, yeah, see? Uh, I don't usually see it quite like this. So it's a little unusual for me. But. Okay, so what we had here was dirt and big stones. In fact, there's a monster right there that I cannot budge. A good rule of thumb when you're um, when you're removing dirt and debris and rocks from underneath the slab is if it will wiggle, it will come out. If it won't budge at all, then you're you're in for a, a battle. I actually found myself using a jackhammer technique inside the hole and that happens sometimes and when you're doing that you're uh, uh, you're gonna earn it that day like I did today so then after I'd removed all this dirt and debris I had to test it why well we need to know if one if we've gotten enough dirt and stuff out or two if we need to add a second suction point which You've seen in my videos before so I'm going to show you how I test it all right so that is not glued and obviously that is not glued but I've set I've got it set up to test and I'm gonna show you all right so I've got the pipe dry fitted and now I'm going to use a temporary seal I always use backer rod and then seal it but I'm just using the backer rod without sealing it so we can get a read on roughly how we're looking here I've got that you see how I've got that pipe marked just a little bit so when I do go to glue it um, we'll make sure that we have it set up optimal when I don't like to have the writing revealed there we go get me there yeah I, I try to keep that invisible and I've already got my hole drilled and I'm gonna need both my hands to put that on Okay, so that's hanging out right there, and I'm going to go outside and fire up the fan and see how we do. Alrighty. So this right here is uh, the beefier of the two fans I typically use. We'll let that kind of warm up and do its thing. See, they look pretty much exactly alike, except you'll notice this one uh, has a four inch, well, two four inch inlet and outlets, while this is three inch. Um, and it just, it moves a heck of a lot more air. That one is significantly heavier than this one, but they take up the exact same footprint. So just use your common sense for starters. This will blow my hair back. So that's good. I was, I'm pleasantly surprised. So, see like that. I've had them before where you could put tissue over it and it wouldn't move. <laughs> so we'll go see exactly uh, what kind of air we're moving now. So since there's no real standard operating procedure on how much dirt and stuff you you take out just establish a policy or a goal for yourself is what i would recommend i try to take out about three five gallon buckets full um i like these right here they're, they're, these little ergonomic handles are really helpful when you're schlepping a bunch of uh, dirt and stuff out because dirt's heavy so i shoot for three and i'll settle for two and i've gotten as much as five and on this one, I had to, I had to settle. Uh, it just stopped coming out uh, like I would like it. And so we fired it up and it looks like we're gonna be okay. Hope my policies and goals assist you when you encounter this. Yeah.